Valley of the Boom is the National Geographic series about the scrappy ups, uh, the scrappy upstarts that pioneered the web we have today. It will compete at the Emmys and other awards. I'm Matt Noble at Gold Derby here with Matthew Carnahan, who created, wrote, and directed the series. Matthew, what was the most surprising thing you learnt about the internet? I, I probably the most surprising thing for me personally was that I was actually interested. Um, I hadn't really been interested and, in, uh, in the origins of, you know, the browser, for example. And, um, so that, that, that surprised me. Um, it also surprised me that it was so that the, that the stakes were so high and that players like Microsoft played so dirty and, uh, and that Bill Gates was totally gangster, which. I never really knew. Um, so yeah, yeah, he, he went for it. Um, so uh, it was just an interesting, it was an interesting time. Um, there were true innovators and makers um, and there were, you know, as there are in any gold rush, a lot of charlatans and uh, imposters as well. So it was really fun to just sort of play with, to play with being imposters ourselves, to play with form, to play with music and, you know, to make the, you know, I mentioned Bill Gates was kind of gangster. So we did a 90s style rap battle for the, uh, you know, the, 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 the browser war between Netscape and uh, Microsoft, you know, just, we really had a fun time. We played a lot. Mm. And like, yeah, I guess sort of like playing a lot and doing all these different things. The show has so many different tones. It's sort of part drama, it's part comedy, uh, it's part rap battle, and it's part um, and it's part documentary as well. How did you uh, juggle all those different tones? Um, well, I had made one political documentary, um, a very kind of agitprop documentary about uh, about Rudy Giuliani um, when he was sort of at the tail end of his mayoralty of New York City. And, um, and so I kind of, I'm, I am interested in applying um, playful documentary techniques whenever possible. And this was just such a great, um, this just seemed like a really great uh, opportunity to do that because there was, um, there were, uh, you know, people are still alive and, you know, can serve as talking heads. And, you know, because we were working with uh, Ariana Huffington as one of the producers of the show, um, she has, you know, just unbelievable access to uh, pretty much anybody. And um, so we were able to get people like Mark Cuban who were there then and who were, you know, he was a total, you know, he was writing this, you know, codec for uh, for live broadcasting. He was a total tech nerd, you know, he was a coder and he was deep in it. So, you know, having somebody like him who we know in a different way now, um, I don't know if you got, do you guys watch our version of Shark Tank? Probably not. Yeah, I've seen, I've, I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, so we know him as this, you know, sort of flashy entrepreneur, um, you know, and billionaire, but he was, you know, he was there at the beginning and he actually, so people like him um, and, uh, you know, James Barksdale, um, you know, and then people who were kind of at the fringes and edges of, you know, uh, who, you know, who were worth billions of dollars one minute and, you know, the next were, uh, were kind of back on the street. Um, so it was just a really fun thing to kind of um, play with the back and forth of scripted versus documentary and letting letting the documentary um, contradict the scripted and scripted, you know, contradict rather than just constantly being in support of everything, you know, and, and sending in, you know, imposters to pretend they're somebody and then, you know, uh, play with that. And so, yeah, it was, it was just a really fun, you know, it, it was just another kind of uh, mode of play. Yeah. So. 
Uh, one interview you couldn't get was Mark, the, <laughs> the co-founder of uh, Netscape, which you have a bit of fun with, with the actor sort of talking about how well, you wouldn't do an interview and things like that. Uh, how, how hard did you push for that interview? And is there anyone else that you would have liked to talk to that you didn't get a chance to? Um, yeah, there are a few, but really it was Andreessen that was the one we really, really wanted. There were a few, um, uh, you know, I think we only reached out once to Tim uh, Bernard's Lee, is that his name? The, found, the act guy who actually invented the internet. Um, the English guy is remarkable, you know, uh, that's, obviously. That's not, not, that, that, that's not Al Gore? That's, uh, that's Al, Gore. Al Gore, yeah, he was, he and Al Gore were there together yeah. in their dorm room. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, Mark Andreessen, man, we fought hard for him, and and actually Ariana Huffington is very close. You know, they're they're friends, and you know Andreessen is just not that guy. He's just not gonna. He's just not gonna get on camera and reminisce about the old days. And you know, he uh, he's a very particular personality, and you know, mind, and the very things that made him able to, uh, you know write uh, hundreds of thousands of line of code that changed every minute of our lives, you know, for the rest of our lives are also the things that I think maybe are possibly limiting as, uh, you know, in terms of being a social person. Um, you know, and that's, that's the case with a lot of these guys, you know, they're, they're really, uh, you know, they're, they're generally, um, you know, generally uh, introverted and um uh you know so I, you know I, I think it's a it's a over general over generalization to say that you know they're you know often on the spectrum but but i would say that more than you know more than a random sampling of the population they are um mm -hmm. yeah so it's an interest it's an interesting group of people to be um, you know, digging in and exploring and talking to. And I, I, you know, I fell in love with, you know, people who write code and, you know, and uh, I fell in love with this world because they're, they're so, uh, when it's the pure innovation part, it's so wonderful and so authentic and so, uh, so much innovation. And of course, when commerce comes in and when Wall Street comes in, the whole thing turns to crap. But, um, but you know, these people, you know, and they're still out there. There's still, you know, people out there making amazing stuff. And there are still imposters out there and charlatans out there pretending to make great stuff, you know, uh, as we, as we saw with Theranos recently. Yeah most recently but you know the next one i'm sure is uh everyone's trying to invest in right now yeah D uh, if mark's friends of ariana did you get any sort of sense of whether he watched it or or what he thought of it i haven't uh you know i haven't talked to ariana for yeah. probably six weeks and mm -hmm. uh that's the first thing i want to ask her when yeah. i when i connect with her again is uh did andreessen mention it did he see it did he hate it um you know, I think it's such an original piece that, you know, uh, certainly people like Steph Paterno and, um, you know, some of the, some of the characters that became characters in the, some of the real people who became characters in the, in the piece really felt like we got it right. So I don't know if Andreessen would or not. Um, you know, we certainly had a lot of other people from Netscape who felt like mm. they were served well by it, but who knows? They were definitely the good guys. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like sort of the thing that, you know, you sort of the, the choice in the film is to tell a story from the perspective of these sort of like scrappy upsets rather than it being the film about Microsoft or from that uh, sort of like angle of the sort of um, what did, did you ever think about in like, where was that decision to go? We're going like with Netscape and with some of those like little upstarts rather than, you know, telling the Microsoft story. Well, you have to just, you know, just contextualize 
um, a little bit about Netscape because they were at the time, yes, they were an upstart, but they were an upstart that at one point um, controlled about 80% of the browser market <laughs> and were, and their uh, growth trajectory was off the charts, like historic. They had a histor they had an historic IPO. Um, they were the kings of the mountain. You know, they were they were the king of the mountain for a minute, and until Bill Gates swung his gaze toward the internet and said, "I want that, and we're going to get that at any cost." He tried to do it by partnering with them, but the partnering he offered was hmm. was really just a it was really just lip service to get the fuck out of my way, you know? Yeah. Um, and so um, even though Netscape won a victory um, in federal court and Microsoft was ultimately um, found guilty of antitrust violations, pretty serious ones, one of some of the biggest um, in our nation's history, um, by then, the, you know, the damage was done. Netscape was mortally wounded and basically limped off into oblivion. Um, although from the ashes of Netscape rose Mozilla slash Firefox, which is still, I would say, the, you know, the kind of the geeks, uh, um, you know, browser. So, so, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it was an interesting time. So, yeah, you know, uh, then conversely, I would say um, a company, um, you know, a company uh, like, um, you know, Steph Paterno and Todd's, Todd, Todd Krasman's company, um, that really was, you know, a tiny little company that was hatched you know, with a few dollars in a dorm room, you know, on the East Coast, it was a complete outlier. And, but then they also had a, you know, they had a, they had uh, the single biggest gain in the history of uh, tech, um, uh, on, you know, on, the, on their IPO. Um, I think they were valued at $9 a share and, and went up to 78 or something like that or 87 i can't remember it was crazy um you know in the course of one in the course of their ipo day so um yeah i mean they're they were uh they were really something yeah it, it is interesting the like looking at those stories and the netscape story because like before the docu before i watched the series I only knew Netscape as like a logo that was on my school computer desktop <laughs> growing up. And it was like amazing. To, like, I don't think we, we, I think we just used Internet Explorer at school instead. And just to yeah. know the story behind that little logo that I never really knew what it was and just right. the big impact it had on like behemoths like Microsoft to the stock market and all those sorts of things. Yeah, um, exactly. it, it was crazy. Uh, what was for you did you try to get an interview with bill gates did you reach out to him at all i don't know if we even tried because yeah. you know, it was a fairly foregone conclusion we may have reached out we may have reached out to microsoft to see if mm. they you know and we did talk to the head of the internet explorer uh team who is in the documentary who's mm. amazing and an absolute genius. He doesn't exactly come off as the warmest person in the world, but, mm. but, um, you know, he's brilliant. And, you know, the stuff he's gone on to do is a whole other documentary, you know, it's, yeah. he's really cool. what's your favorite moment, Matthew, in the series what was your favorite scene or se like series of scenes or. Gosh. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I love, I'll tell you what it is actually. I think, I think my favorite piece is um, uh, when Steve Zahn um, is on a phone call driving in his car on his big giant 90s cell phone and he's uh, 
he we found out for the first time that he's not who he says he is and he's actually a he's actually invented an entire uh you know personality and you know dyed his hair and you know fled the law and he's wanted you know uh he's supposed to be serving something like 30 years in prison and he's starting this tech company and he's this remarkable character um and he's talking on the phone on this giant cell phone and driving and he just breaks he not only breaks the fourth wall he just breaks reality because he's still driving but obviously he's in some kind of rig because he just starts to turn to the camera and starts um narrating from this letter that he wrote to his ex-wife um and so and it's just this very chilling moment where he uh, and one of the things he says in this letter is I have always had I have always had a remarkable ability to defy reality, um, which is a real thing that he said. And uh, and in that moment, he's you know he's defying reality. And so I, I I don't know. I just really enjoy that moment. But I really like you know I really loved the you know the when Lamorne Morris's character introduces the rap battle and suddenly this very sort of patrician ultra white environment is just taken over by these two amazing rappers and they become you know they become netscape and and uh and microsoft i really enjoy that moment um i really like the the dream ballet sequence uh also that steve zahn does he's a, he's a great dancer and we brought in this amazing uh uh you know prima ballerina from uh I remember which company um uh to do this dream ballet with him and it's just uh it's the first moment in the show where you really go oh okay we're not there's different rules in this universe and okay you know and you kind of either take the trip at that point or you don't so. hmm and Matthew, to wrap up, what is the one thing, like the one thing above all else that you're taking away from having uh, put together and created and directed uh, Valley of the Boom? Um, well, I think there are a couple of things. There's a couple of things. There's a, there's a positive takeaway, which is kind of, which is about innovation, which is about makers, which is about, uh authenticity which is about how technology is in a way its own art form um and you really have these these people really you know mark andreessen mark andreessen is in a way you know his own um you know he, his own um van gogh or you know or i mean he's really creating something from zeros and ones that you know that has completely altered our lives. So that, I mean, that's a remark, that's sort of something that I hadn't thought about. I'm an artist and so I had always thought, well, art is art, technology is technology. They, they're, they're unrelated, but the kind of innovation that happens, um, the kind of creative vision that happens for these people is, is truly remarkable and, and it's its own art form. Um, and, I, and I would say the other piece is that there's a real cautionary tale um, there's a cautionary tale about, um, uh, you know, big, big corporations, you know, uh, uh, coming along and, um, you know, kind of consuming, uh, new ideas and, um, new innovators and, you know, there's a reason we have things like antitrust laws and I know they're unpopular with uh you know conservative ultra conservative um you know uh uh political thinkers but you know th there there's a reason we protect you know small businesses and individuals who are trying to make something um and uh you know, um, so that, you know, I would say there's a, there's a cautionary tale to, uh, to about, um, net neutrality and, you know, letting the internet, um, letting the internet be a wide open space that, that doesn't, uh, 
that isn't defined by how much money you put in to use it. Well, thanks, Matthew. And to everyone watching, go to goldderby.com right now and make your predictions so you can compete against our experts, editors, and other fans to see if you are the smartest procrastinator in Hollywood. Before you do, click our subscribe button so you're alerted to other great chats with Hollywood stars. Uh, thanks so much, Matthew. Great to chat. Yeah, great to talk to you. Thanks. No worries.